technically, yes, you can absolutely convert scholarships into NIL bonuses. That's where we are in this age of college athletics, but it's not that easy to do, and it could lead to some uncomfortable conversations. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So maybe Penn State doesn't have a scholarship issue if everything can just be solved with NIL, right? It's not that simple, actually. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts including YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side. And it, and it is why I am a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Help me welcome them back. Locked On's recruiting expert, Brian Smith, also the host of Locked On Seminoles, covers the Miami Hurricanes and the Auburn Tigers as well. So getting that comprehensive college football recruiting perspective and I guess I can call you a transfer portal expert as well, as that's what we're going to focus on today, Brian. I want P- I want to know people's thoughts in the comments, what Penn State should do in the transfer portal, who they're worried about possibly losing to the portal, because they're going to have some players that are going to enter. And it's been brought to my attention. Okay, a lot of these scholarships, you know, the scholarships don't matter anymore. That number of 85 is arbitrary. As long as you stay within the range, I, I can't remember the exact number, but college football says you can have up to 110, maybe 120 players total on your team. 85 of them can be scholarships. But Brian, I still think that's an issue because right now, per what the athletic has done in terms of math, and forget what Keandre Lambert's, you know, his status in the transfer portal, that's just one player. But Penn State had 99 players on scholarship before KLS was even in the portal. So you mean to tell me, Brian, that Penn State is just going to, that most of these players, that 14 players are going to be okay with giving up full tuition, room and board, a free ride and converting NIL, potential NIL learnings into a free education. I understand a free college education is great, but to sit and say, hey, we're going to revoke 14 of our players' scholarships, how how many players is that actually going to sit well with? I can't imagine these conversations are going to be easy. There's a lot to it. Part of it will take care of itself and some kids will weave and the numbers will go down Yes. Coach Franklin and his staff, maybe they get down to five or seven pretty easily after spring. Right. But you still do have to get to 85 come hell, come high water. I think it's by August 1st, July, something. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know the date. Whatever it is, they got to get down to that number. And I'm sure there's some people that have talked about that. I know that there are a few schools that have like given an NIL to a kicker and substitute of a right. scholarship. Like one or two players, I get it. But anything more than that, it gets a little dicey, especially if they've already been on scholarship. There's some honor in that. There's right. some pride in yes. that. Yes. It don't look, football people are in, incredibly stubborn. Coaches are the worst. But players are used to being told they're great. Losing your scholarship, it's just not gonna fly. It's yeah. not gonna work. Mathematically, that works. But if you do that, your program will go in the dumpster really quick because you'll tick off a lot of people in the locker room. And once you got a bad locker room, it doesn't matter the dial up. End of story. Whoever put that out, absolutely, unequivocally garbage. That does not work. And there's also, the like you said, the math exists where you have to get rid of 14 scholarships. Sure. But at this NIL, I, I don't know how much Happy Valley United has and what, what donors are contributing. But if you do simple math, like I'm talking, this is a very low ballpark figure, just doing the numbers, crunching the numbers. Let's let's say, let's round up that tuition for most in-state students, Pennsylvania in-state students, is about 25 grand. And that's just tuition. That's not room and board. That's not anything else, right? So if you multiply that by 14 times, you're getting about a you're getting about a bill of 350 grand. Does Happy Valley United? Maybe they do. Maybe they do. Maybe they have 350 grand set aside to cover the education. And again, that is in state, but then you factor in out of state costs, you factor in room and board at Penn state already kind of has food included with, you know, again, with team meals and everything else. So I'm not going to go through an itinerary of everything, but then again, you're taking cash opportunities away from students to, to, to subsidize other things. You're robbing Peter 
to pay Paul in this case. Again, a, a full ride matters. And, and good luck telling somebody out of the transfer portal that is a high-end recruit when they do re-enter the portal, right? And tell them that we can get you some NIL dollars to cover your education costs, but we can't get you anything extra. Uh, <laughs> recruits aren't going to take too kind to that. Current college players are not going to take too kindly to that. You brought up a good point. They still need help in the transfer portal, which means more people being added to the roster. This yes. is where it gets really interesting. Yeah. I'm just going to give a 10 second version of the following. We've discussed sure. NIL on this show numerous times. I got some information yesterday about a player that is not repeat is not a top line guy, but plays a lot at a power five school. I'm going to leave names completely out of this. He was contacted unsolicited by a major program and offered $500,000 to come to their school because he's a defensive tackle. This is not a starter. So go ahead and tell kids you just come to Happy Valley for pennies. Good luck. And then you still have the numbers thing too. This does not work without big NIL money with the portal, like upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame and Penn State are like the same when it comes to the high school thing. You got to get there for you get money. But in the portal, they'll give guys and they'll set up deals and all this stuff sure. through different companies, Under Armour, whatever the heck it is. Penn State has to do that stuff too. And part of it's going to have to come from their collective or whatever it's you want to call it you've got to be able to use that on these kids coming in you can't give it to kids to stick around that are just kind of at the bottom of the roster they're going to have some awkward conversation they're going to be some kids that are basically cut if they don't want to leave because franklin cannot i'm sorry this is just how it works use that money on players that aren't going to help much when he's still got to get guys to make the roster better that's the other part of the equation. It is college football today. College football coaching is more about management and dealing with media, which they hate, and I would, don't yeah. blame them, than anything else. And this, this show is a prime point of that. And you bring it up, just bringing in a couple guys. I'm sure they would love to get a prime receiver. You're always looking at offensive tackles and corners, et cetera. Yeah. There's going to be somebody at one of those spots they're going to offer money to. But they're going to give it to that guy and not some guy that's barely on the roster they might keep mm -hmm. and give some NIL money to. It's not even going to be close. They're just going to tell that kid it's gone. That's how it works. Well, and that's just it. We're going to discuss it more in the upcoming segment about how Penn State's already, again, 12 to 15 over the limit. Again, some websites have, oh, they're at 96. They're at 97. The Athletic, who originally kind of brought everyone's attention to this, at, at 99. And then Penn State and James Franklin say, well, our math's a little different, and we know what our plan is for the transfer portal. Either way, about double, di again, double digit, at least at the very minimum, at the very minimum 10, no matter what the math is, 10 Penn State players are going to have to lose their scholarships. Is it converted into NIL? Oh, I, again, the scholarship thing is important. I, I really don't, I, I really don't like hearing that it's just, well, N NIL will take care of it. No. And I, okay. But then again, players are going to want more just naturally. Why is he on scholarship? And then I got to convert my scholarship into NIL. And then my NIL earnings go away because I have to get my education covered when he does not. You said it. That doesn't work. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you the other back end of this. If some of these kids are from programs or areas that Penn State recruits yearly, how do you think that's going to go over with the local high school coaches? It's not. This is a recruiting disaster for any team that would do it. And to be clear, I don't expect Franklin to do the plan that you're talking about. Some of the people bring that there's no chance they're going to find these kids homes, even if they got to go to FCS or whatever. Mm -hmm. It is all about being as friendly as possible, showing your best face. Even if you can't stand the kid, can't stand his parent <laughs> relationships, 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 high school coaches, seven on seven coaches, trainers, all those people will get ticked if you cut their kids. Even if they suck, that's just the way it is. Penn State is not in control, nor is anybody else with this. Mm -hmm. It's always about the people that you're recruiting, and that includes all the coaches and people around the prospect. It is very complex. If happy about, and then this is contingent on, uh, I'll finish with this. This is contingent on the fact that maybe Happy Valley United does have a base of money to convert those some of those scholarships and then some so that, Kids, players aren't losing out on opportunities to earn more NIL. It's just, it is a very murky situation. Again, there, there's the understanding that Keandre Lambert Smith, one of the reasons he entered the transfer portal was because he wasn't exactly pleased with his NIL situation. 
So there you go. And that's just one player. So I, I can't imagine that same standard doesn't apply to anybody else, not only at Penn State, but across the board. Again, it's transfer portal season. Look at Colorado's in every other headline. <laughs> that's exactly right. I mean, Dion has something to do with that, but the transfer portal is fascinating to people, Penn State and everybody else, because one guy can really change your roster. Joe Burrow and a lot of different players sure. that end up being drafted, especially a quarterback, have been big time. Burrow's probably the greatest transfer just about ever. But there's always an opportunity, and people just look for the future, looking for something. I get it. The other end of that, again, though, is what you brought up at the beginning of this show. You still have to get to 85 and balance the NIL. There are a lot of moving parts, and that's why it's fascinating. So with all of that being said, Brian, you've touched on it a little bit. Can Penn State even add anybody else given its scholarship total? Well, yeah, it, they they can. But based on what was shown in the spring game, you're a little pessimistic about that. So there's other ulterior reasons why Penn State might not be able to add who they want. Let's discuss that on the other side of this break. Today's episode is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, maybe to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? Well, with Yahoo Finance, you can get the access to the news, the data, the tools that you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures that you have insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Once again, that's yahoofinance.com. It's more than just scholarship numbers. It's more than just NIL. Penn State, from what they showed in the spring game, might scare away some potential players in the transfer portal. Before we get back into our conversation, today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. I've already talked about gave, giving my takeaways, both positive and negative, on the spring game for Penn State, you know, the reasons and everything else. But not everybody's going to listen to the show and take a nuanced look at it and say, well, okay, there's the wind gust. It's a new offense. One way or another, it wasn't the prettiest spring game. And there is a lot of, I, I will admit, a, a, little, a good amount of sugarcoating to it as well. One way or another, it was not an ideal performance by the offense. What, because whether that's you know counting Keandre Lambert Smith wasn't there because he was going into the portal. Julian Fleming was on the other side. Offensive line was banged up. You didn't have your two starting running backs. You're going to have to do a lot of explaining for what was shown. And then again, this was against the these weren't two even team brought two even teams. Brian, that was my biggest concern is that oh hey the scout team defense looked really good. Oh yeah. Oh oh the scout team defense looked really good. These were essentially the ones against the twos and threes. So what gives? And if you're in the transfer portal, and you've mentioned this, that Penn State had to show a lot from the passing game or at least a step in the right direction. I think they had a good amount of explosive play or somewhat, you know, median explosive plays. They had six passing plays of 15 or more yards. Hey, that's better than nothing compared to 2023. But in your mind, and I agree with you, it wasn't enough to any prospective wide receivers that Penn State does need out of the transfer portal. They need another wide receiver out of the transfer portal. But given scholarships, given that, oh, NIL dollars are going to have to go to supplement people if they want to keep them to stay, and then if you want a big name out of the transfer portal, do you have enough NIL leverage to go and get them? On top of that, oh, the recent tape does not look good, even though you changed offensive coordinators. You need some splash. And watching it from the outset, 
I mean, Drew's throwing like tunnel screens, basic hitches quick. Like he was playing like they knew that it wasn't going to go well up front. You mentioned the offensive line's got some banged up and nothing against Penn State. This is a problem in college football in general. O-line is not very good in college football. It's not developed as well as it probably should. I don't know the full reason. And having a few injuries doesn't help. But they were playing like it was a hot potato. That's how I looked at it. They ran the ball decently a few times here and there. And they, oh, yeah. Penn State's running back room is deep. It's really yeah. talented. They do anything well, it's running backs. <laughs> There's no question. But Drew didn't look comfortable to me. And I'm like, good Lord. He, he started all last year. He's their guy. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows it. I just don't think he's got a lot of confidence in the players he's throwing to. And maybe that's a hot take that's completely garbage. But he just did not look comfortable to me. Uh, the one slot fade to Saunders, he missed. They didn't look explosive at all. And I just don't think it's a unit that's going to make very many receivers and tight ends that are actually good be like, oh, wow, I, th- I think I'd like to join that. I want to be a part of it. Look at it this way. Ohio State's receiver room is loaded. And Jeremiah Smith signed there. He was the best player in the country last year. Yeah, Great players want to play with great players. Who in Penn State's offense, you go, except for the running back room, you go, that's a great player. There isn't. And that should never be the case at Penn State. Now, again, the two running backs are out, so they can't count them. They're both yeah. elite players. It's not, you know, Katron, et cetera. But for the love of God, why can't they get somebody down the field, make it look fluid and, and whatnot with some of the motion and doing different things, get the defense out of position, hit a big play? They just didn't. I mean, it was 13 to nothing going in late in the game. And everybody knows they got to throw the football. They have to. It's not anything more than an open book. And they didn't show me anything. If they didn't show me, what do you think about the parent of somebody who's got a kid in the portal that's got one year left? Mm -hmm. You really want to hit your wagon to that? Again, it is bad that Penn State did this, and it's bad for for football if Penn State's not good this fall. I mean, they got an elite defense again. And part of it, you can say all you want, well, the defense played well. Sure they did. But the offense didn't even try. Like the offensive play calling, the short passes, the little hitches and different things, I was completely unimpressed. And I I was kind of mad. I'm like – you had all spring, and this is what you're going to show us. You're not going to get anybody doing this. Prove me wrong. Again, there are factors to it. Discussed it in a previous episode. I, I think both parts of it are true because I agree. The downfield passing attack is going to make or break Penn State's offense again. That's what happened. Penn State, yep. when when they faced any opponent, once they figured it out, they said they took half of the first quarter and they said, okay, we will we will back off our safeties and see what you're going to do. I, I'm I'm a Steelers fan. I, I'm a Steelers fan. When Ben Roethlisberger was in his final season and they went ten and zero, it was the COVID year, no fans and everything, and all oh, the you know st- greatest Steelers ever. They're undefeated. That was the worst uh, inefficient offense that the Steelers had ever put together in Ben's tenure. And then once NFL defense was like, oh, you get the ball out in point two seconds, we can just press you and make your offense completely anemic. That is the same case for Penn State here. Very so good you, comparison. Very when good you comparison. don't when you can stack the boxes, everyone's all oh, Singleton took a step back. Katron Allen took a step back. Yeah, because there's nine defenders in the box. They can't <laughs> dodge everybody. And and then the offensive line didn't live up to expectations. And I, but the missing component is that you do not have a player that can stretch the field. What happened? What happened to the types of players of KJ Hamler, Jahan Dotson? guys that could go over the top and at least keep one safety back. That was the thing. Ohio State, Michigan, anybody else said, we're going to play single coverage, bring our safeties low to the box because you can't threaten us deep. And in one-on-one coverage, 99 times out of 100, your wide receivers aren't beating. And I know this is Will Johnson. I know this is Denzel Burke. These are the best of the best corners and they have futures in the NFL. But they're back next season. I know they're not playing Michigan, but those types of cornerbacks are back next season. Then you add Oregon, Washington, USC, UCLA, three of four, which you're playing and your wide receiver room lost the, you know, your number one contributor, no matter what, because Brian, people are split on the whole, you know, KLS. It feels like this is a 50, 50 thing. There's people that hate him. And there's people that are like, no, this is, this is awful. This can't happen. I, I take a, a middle, middle of the road approach. It's not ideal. But Keandre Lambert Smith wasn't great. He had his best performances against West Virginia, Indiana, Maryland, secondaries that struggled. But when it came to Ohio State, Michigan, and then completely faded at the end of the season, if that's your number, uh, that number one wideout on any other program, if that happened with any other program, he would probably still be 
in the transfer portal in this case. I believe his last three games, he had two catches for 28 yards. Like he, he was done. Like mentally, he, he did not care. I don't know what, I don't know what Marcus Haggins maybe took him out of the rotation or limited him in the rotation. Some, something completely changed yeah, here. He just uh, disappeared the last yeah. three, four games. Barring him having some injury we don't know about, and I, I say this all the time on my Locked On Seminoles podcast, coaches do nothing but lie at press conferences, especially about injuries. He may have been hurt and we don't know it, uh, or they just deny it or whatever. They'll lie over their grandmother's grave. They just won't do it. Yeah. But he still had like two catches for 28 yards, and he's your most talented guy. That's never good. So he's leaving. Who the hell is going to replace him? And you still need two or three other guys that are good. You know, I could, I'm not trying just to be a jerk, but like this is a team that could be top five in the nation if they had a passing game because that defense is that yeah. good. They're well not the passing game. I'm going to tell, tell you what's happened. They will be lucky to make the playoff, and if they do, they're going to play one of the elite teams right off the bat, and they're going to get smoked. I, I don't think any Penn State fan wants to see them as the 11 seed, and, you know, but they'll play on the road against some team that has some DBs. And they're going to do exactly what you said Michigan and Ohio State did last year. We're going to play press. We're going to mix it up a little bit, but we're going to play press. Mm -hmm. We're going to come after your quarterback who's not that mobile, and you'll score about 10 to 15 points, and we're going to kick the crap out of you. You have to be able to throw the ball when you want consistently down the field. Penn State can't do that until otherwise proven. Or at least keep them honest because you have sure. other things. Again, Tyler Warren is might be the first tight end taken in next year's he's, draft. Yeah, and he's then, talented. Yeah, yeah. And then you have Singleton. You have Allen. You have great, not good, not even really good. You have great players, some of which are best in the nation, and you can't utilize them. You can't maximize their talents simply because all you need is one. You just need one. You need a KJ Hamler type that can just keep defense is honest that say, man, we got to keep a safety back because we don't get one. We don't want to get burned over the top by him. Yeah. That's the thing. When you know, when you have a special tight end, it's as versatile a player as there is in college football. Yes. I'm not saying anybody's going to be Brock Bowers this year. I mean, what he did at George is ridiculous. Yes. Middle of the field guys that can make plays are the most yep. important because that keeps linebackers honest from diving in the box, hammering on Catron, etc. But at the same time, okay, that's their guy. We're not scared about the perimeter. Safeties will play more towards the middle of the field or you shade one towards your tight end. If he's in the slot, it's the same thing. You take away the best player, make somebody on the perimeter, win one-on-ones, which they have not proven yeah. they can do yet, and then you're in trouble. I mean, I know it's it sounds ridiculous that two guys are just talking about this on a podcast in April, but that's exactly what played out last fall inside a Beaver Stadium. We watch like Watching Penn State's passing game is hard on the eyes. And that's again, it should never be that way at Penn State, ever, ever, ever. So it, it's just funny to me when I right out of high school, one of the my favorite teams to ever watch was the '94 Penn State because their offense was so balanced. They had you know because John Carter was great and all that, but mm -hmm. they had two receivers that were NFL players. You couldn't pick your poison because the poison was everywhere. You couldn't just go in. They had a pretty good tight end too. They just found ways to nickel and dime you, and when you got sucked in. They'd hit a slant or a deep ball and just take the carpet right out from underneath you and land somebody on their face. They drop 45, 50 on somebody like nothing. <laughs> so it's just weird that 30 years later, they're in the opposite direction. That makes no sense in today's passing era. But here we are. You have a five-star quarterback. You have a former five-star running back and a high-end four-star, right? Singleton and Allen are on the same level. Julian Fleming comes in. He will help with the running game because he's a blocking wide receiver. But again, he's a possession receiver. I'm looking for somebody that can stretch the football field. And Penn right. State does not have that. Trey Wallace is capable. Julian Fleming is a great addition. I am not going to deny that. But we can't pretend that he's just going to take over passing, you know, the passing attack for Penn State and give defenses headaches. That's not his job. His job is to be a leader, the the set the edge set the edge when it comes to blocking in the running game as a wide receiver, and then be that, hey, it's third and seven. Let's get it to Julian Fleming, one of our trusted targets. But there's nobody that can get those explosive plays that James Franklin emphasizes all the time. Yeah, if they don't get that, I mean, they're eight and four, nine and three. Uh, the schedule is more difficult this next season. They're not going to be Ohio State. Difficult. I mean, like the Ohio State game will be a bloodbath. Um, I don't think they're quite as good as what some people are saying. They got some quarterback issues, but they're so loaded on defense, and they have yeah, so they many skill everybody players, back, you know. And 
that's going to be rough. Michigan is nowhere near where they were. They, they got a chance to beat them, but no, Oregon yeah. and Southern Cal and some of these teams, the attrition that you're going to take throughout the season will be more SEC like. It's going to be harder. If you can't score points, you're going to really struggle in close games. So now it's a matter of, okay. You're already struggling at wide receiver, and then you just lost somebody. Again, this is a loss no matter what you think of KLS. He goes into the portal. Yep. He is not coming back. And then you have the scholarship limitations. Can you add a wide receiver? What can Penn State do here? What do they need to do? We'll finish it up here. Coming up next on Locked On, Nittany Lions. And today's episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Believe it or not, I have a competitive side. That's right. I, I am competitive. I mean, we all are to an extent. And my competitive side is as a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly, but now I can also rob their vaults of the riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with your friends. So not just play against them, but you can team up with them and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game, join your friends, download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Once again, that's Monopoly Go. Today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. Why well, you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs? LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you cannot find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but they might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing a lot of hats and might not have the time to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job de descriptions, making the process even quicker. 2.5 million businesses use LinkedIn jobs. So become one of them. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So what should Penn State do to mitigate the loss of Keandre Lambert-Smith? You're losing a projected starter, a fifth-year veteran in the program. You have to find a, at least a comparable replacement. Before we get back to that, help out the show. Subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoy these conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams, you can check out Brian's work on X to keep up with more recruiting on a national scale. Also takes on the Miami Hurricanes and the Auburn Tigers. And in this final segment, Penn State lost one of its three starting wide receivers here. Some people say, oh, Keandre Lambert-Smith uh, wouldn't have been a starter. How could you say that? No, he would have been. He started last season. They didn't bring anybody in that was better other than Julian Fleming. And so he was going to be he was going to be demoted. He was no longer the number one wideout. And I've talked about that. That's, you know, a punch to the gut. That's a punch to the ego that you go from being the number one guy to potentially the number three guy. But Penn State starts three wide receivers. So there you go, Fleming, Lambert Smith, and Trey Wallace. And we you know, expect Trey Wallace to stay healthy. Now, one of those starters has gone in. Penn State has plenty of guys in the wide receiver room. They actually have a lot. They had 15 scholarship wide receivers before the portal even opened. So mm -hmm. there's still guys are going to exit from the wide receiver room. And you have the scholarship limitations. What, what's going to, you know, how much NIL do they have to get a big name out of the portal? Penn State's options are limited. It's early, Brian, but this is just kind of a heat check of where everything is. Names like Justice Ross Simmons uh, are one. Carmelo English, just a, a name to watch because he was a former teammate of A.J. Harris's. And uh, the coaches can be as good as recruiting at, at recruiting as they want. But, Brian, you and I know that player recruiting is king above all else here. So maybe A.J. Harris can have that impact on a former high school teammate. But as, as of right now, Penn State is at a loss here with KLS going into the portal and with no obtainable, tangible 
wide receiver that they can bring in to replace him because of all the restrictions that we have talked about in 20 minutes plus here? Three things. Number one, it's going to be a few days before some of the guys get officially put into the portal. Paperwork's pain in the butt. You and I were just talking <laughs> about that off air. I've heard yeah. about that stuff from coaches and, and whatnot. These recruits think they just hit a button in there. I thought it was portal. quiet. I thought it was really, oddly That's quiet. That's not how here. it works. It's a pain. Yeah. Yeah. All your transcripts, I mean, you got to go through and do it the way they want, not the way you want. That means you actually got to go to class, got to have grades, stuff like that. What? Two, pin, yeah, what, a, what an imagination that I have for saying such a thing about a college student. There are a lot of players like Jared Verse went to Florida State. He played at Albany. There's going to be some kid that played at some FCS school is going to end up at Florida State or LSU or Oklahoma State or Michigan mm -hmm. State, whatever, that's going to be all conference this next year. Which staff, Penn State could be that staff, is going to find that guy, bring him in, and he's going to be a starter. And everybody's going to be like, who in the world is this guy? He's really good. This is the kind of scenario where Penn State, I think, can win. There are a gazillion small schools in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, et cetera. They play mm -hmm. football. Yeah. They got to find one of those guys. It doesn't have to be a receiver either, although I'm yeah. sure you would absolutely applaud it. I'll speak for you on that. Yeah. But they got to find a couple of those guys. Those are the teams that win big, that don't just look, oh, he didn't play in the SEC or the Big Ten. That has nothing to do with it. Sometimes guys develop later. Sometimes guys just have a better attitude, whatever it may be. And those are the things you have to look at. Penn State can find something there. And then the other thing, this, this has happened for, for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. You take a DB and you move him to receiver. You take a running back, you move him to receiver. There's got to be something else they have to experiment with, at least internally. They may not announce it to you or me. There are mm -hmm. other options. Penn State has to look at all different things to make this work. And then, of course, then it still comes back to your original point, bringing down the scholarship totals. Let kids leave. You have to. That's an It's an NCAA mandate. You got to get to 85. But yeah. one or two guys, they, they still got to find to get one or two more guys, I think, on the roster that are – one's got to be a receiver that can play immediately, and then just another playmaker somewhere. Uh, their defense is great, but you're always looking at corner and D-end, et cetera. And then again, imagine having that conversation with a truly impact type of player. I'm not looking for a role guy, Brian. I am looking Dude. for an instant impact starter. Yeah, he doesn't have to form or fight. You know, Julian Fleming's nice, but I'm looking for somebody, again, comparable to Keandre Lambert-Smith, someone who can come in, can start, has college football experience. Imagine telling that player when you're going up against others, so, hey, look, Keandre Lambert-Smith's already been contacted by, hey, Auburn, Colorado, West Virginia, Georgia, just to name the base. So you're going up against those schools that don't have the same kind of scholarship dilemma. They might they might have a few, you know, five, six over, but not 14, 15. Imagine telling that impact type of player, yeah, we want you to come to Penn State, but you're not going to have a full ride. We can't, we can't cover your education, but we can get you, we can convert your NIL to cover your education. And then we might be able to get you some other NIL opportunities on this side. Like, do you see how I, I want fans that this isn't me trying to come down on Penn State, but this is the reality of the situation that these conversations are very awkward if you want to go get that difference maker. Yeah, for those kids, it's got to be all in. There's just no shortcut. Penn State either does it or they don't. They'll get the door slammed on their face immediately. Um, just from talking to the people I know, especially quarterback. I know Penn State's not looking for one, but like quarterback, corner, D-line, those three spots are such a premium. And then offensive tackle, they're just – God, there are hardly anybody that's any good gets in the portal from offensive tackle. So you really got to find a diamond in the rough. You got to spend some money. And again, that's why I brought up the FCS thing. What do you want? Like some mm -hmm. kid played at you know Miami of Ohio or Kent State. Maybe yeah. he played there a couple of years and he got 30 pounds bigger. And you're like, oh, wow. Jared Verse gained 40 pounds during COVID and then transferred. 40 pounds. I mean, you can't predict those kind of things. So – they have to do their due diligence, but they're going to have to have some NIL money to make it happen, no matter what level of player it is. And that's why we have them on the show. Locked On's recruiting expert now, the transfer portal expert, since the <laughs> transfer portal has officially reopened. That is Brian Smith on the other side. Again, you can keep up with him on X. You can follow for national recruiting takes, Auburn Tiger news, and Miami Hurricane news as well, and analysis. Brian, I always appreciate the time. And I'm looking forward to because the transfer portal will heat up and we ha will have more things to react to as time goes on. Thank you very much, sir. 
And thanks again for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. If you enjoyed this content, leave a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. And don't forget, Locked On has made history. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today now available on YouTube and the free Fire TV channels app.